Hello everyone, welcome back. Continuing from the previous video, today's scenario is suppose there are three threads T1, T2 and T3. T1 is responsible for some environment setup. T2 and T3 are the business logic executing threads. T2 and T3 can only start once T1 has finished its execution and the environment is ready for them. So what are the different ways to implement this requirement in Java? I hope you already might have tried it on your own. Still, if it is pending, we will take care of this scenario in today's session. Now without any further delay, let's start. Now we have seen that the execution sequence of multiple threads is unpredictable and that is okay if threads running are independent of each other. But that is not the case every time. Let us consider our scenario for today's video where thread 2 and 3 are independent of each other that is they can run in parallel but they are dependent on thread t1. t2 and t3 will need t1 to complete its setup before they can start their execution. If not handled properly, it is highly possible that the second and third thread may start execution but the first thread has not yet completed its setup. That will result in error or wrong processing as the setup or configuration which was required is not complete. To handle such scenario, there are multiple ways. Before we implement any solution, let us write very basic code of three threads and start their execution to understand what exactly is the problem. Now here we have first thread T1 which will be responsible for environment setup using which other threads will continue their execution. In this for loop is used to imitate the setup of processing and progress. The progress is updated using a variable delay every time. That variable delay is added with the help of thread local random which generates a random number between the range that we have provided which is 400 to 600 milliseconds. This is just to imitate the natural flow because you never have the same execution time for any task. So that is why we have introduced this variable delay. Moving ahead, when the setup processing is done, in the end we are printing that setup is completed. So this was the implementation of first T1 thread. Now let us check the implementation of second T2 thread as well. Similar to T1, the execution pattern is same but the difference is it will be responsible for executing business logic unlike T1 which was handling the environment setup. So in case of processing, that processing will actually tell us the business logic or data processing which this thread will be doing. The third thread T3 is also have the similar implementation that what we have in case of T2. So as per our requirement, we need T1 to finish first and after that T2 and T3 can start the execution in parallel. 
Now without any such handling in place, let us try to run this code and observe the output. So here we can see thread T2 and T3 started their execution before T1 was able to set up the environment for them. So as per the requirement, T2, T3 will be running using the environment setup done by T1. T1 is supposed to perform some configurations which will help in running the business logic in correct way. But if T2, T3 started without T1 completing, then application will definitely run into issues. So how can we solve this issue? One very simple solution that comes to our mind is we can make T2 and T3 wait or sleep for some time so that by the time they are awakened, T1 might have already completed its execution. Now let me modify this code according to this particular solution. Here I have added a sleep of 10 seconds in the beginning of T2 and T3 so that they can wait for 10 seconds and T1 might be able to complete its execution during that time. And once that timer is expired, we are hoping that environment will be ready for T2 and T3 and they can start their execution in proper way. Now let us execute and observe the output. So here you can see T1 was able to complete its execution and later T2 and T3 started parallelly. But the problem is we are assuming that T1 will be able to complete its execution in a fixed amount of time that we have given as 10 seconds in this case. As you know in real life there are many factors which define the actual execution time. There can be network delays third party calls or even input output blockings as well. So to cover up all these scenarios as much as possible, we may need to set up a sleep time of T2 and T3 to a very high value. That is also not a 100% sure solution as it is possible that T might take more time. So in that case, T2 and T3 will start their execution before T1 finishes. But let's just say that T1 does finishes it within the time that we have given. But we have one more problem at hand. If we set the sleep time for T2 and T3 to a very high value, then let's say T1 completed its execution quickly. So T2 and T3 still have to wait for that defined high sleep time to even begin their execution. So this solution which we have implemented is not at all an effective solution. So how to solve these two problems that is T2 and T3 should start as soon as T1 finishes. Neither we want T2, T3 to start before the T1 finishes nor we want them to wait for a longer period of time. Now there are a couple of methods available in thread class which we can use to handle this situation. One such method is is alive. This will tell you if the thread is on which this method is called is still alive. If it is in running state or waiting state, then this function will return true. That means thread has not completed its execution yet. So we can poll a call to this method to check if T1 is still alive. And as soon as T1 finishes, then T2 and T3 can continue with their execution. Let's implement this solution and then we can discuss if it is an optimal solution that we are looking for or not. Here I have added an infinite while loop that will keep on checking if T1 is still alive. And once T1 finishes its execution, it will go out of this loop and continue with the other statements which are part of the thread T2 and thread T3. Now let us run this code and observe the output because we are expecting as soon as T1 finishes, the T2 and T3 threads will not wait for any time and start their execution at the same time. So here you can see uh, we with this we are able to achieve the functional requirement that uh, T2 and T3 should start as soon as T1 is completing its execution. With this we are able to achieve the functional requirement but do you think that this is an optimal solution? Well it's not because if you see by using this polling of checking if T1 is still alive or not is inefficient. 
This will not make the thread T2 and T3 wait for T1 to complete. T2 and T3 will be continuously using the CPU cycles just for continuous checking of thread T1's state. So is there any other way to implement the solution for our problem optimally? Well, yes, there are multiple ways, but today we'll be discussing on the simplest way that we have. That is another method which is available in thread class. Actually, we need a kind of signal that tells T2 and T3 about the completion of T1 instead of polling it continuously. So one thought that might come to our mind is we can use wait and notify so to synchronize the resource usage. But in that case, we may not be able to completely fulfill our requirement of running T2 and T3 in parallel. So for those scenarios, we have join method available in thread class. Let me implement that in both the threads. It is very simple and a very only single line implementation will be required. So let me implement that in both the threads and then we can discuss more about the same. Here this t1.join statement is added as the first line of implementation for both T2 and T3. This is a blocking call. It will pause the currently running thread and wait till the specified thread is alive. So that means till T1 is still alive, the T2 will not run. It will be in the waiting stage. And once that thread, which is T1 in our case, is dead, then it will continue the current thread execution. So the other statements written inside the thread implementation, those will start their execution. So in this way, T2 and T3 will wait for T1 to finish. As soon as T1 is dead, both T2 and T3 start executing in parallel. During the wait state, T2 and T3 also releases the CPU for other threads to use. So it is different from using is alive function call in the while loop. So that gives us the exact solution that we need. Now there is no danger of T2 and T3 to start prematurely or wait for long period after T1 finishes the task. Let us execute and observe the output. So here we can see that using this solution, we are able to overcome the problems that we were facing earlier. But this is not the only way to control the thread execution sequence. There are a couple of more ways, but before we implement those solutions, we need to understand those concepts first. So in the next video, we will cover one such concept, which is countdown latch. I hope you find this video useful. If so, please give us a like and also share it with your friends who really wants to learn Java multithreading. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video with a new concept. Till then, keep learning.